like it, guys. My dog is desperately trying to get in. Can you see him? It's a little terror. Yeah. With um, my mother-in-law is very poorly at the moment in hospital, so we're having to keep going. Well, my husband's having to keep going to her house to look after her dog as well. So I said, oh, bring, bring her dog around here. It's a little terrier. They, oh my goodness, could you imagine the noise? Yeah, no, she'll be all right. Okay, so Pilates. You're going to work where you feel comfortable, okay? And I'm gonna teach you at all levels. So you're gonna have your beginner level, which is gonna be your option number one, or your level number one, and then we'll build it up gradually from there. And I really want you just to work with what feels comfortable for you. So your body isn't always the same every single day. You might wake up tomorrow and not have as much energy or as much strength as today. You might need to work at a different level. So what I'm saying is listen to your body and work appropriately, okay? Oh my goodness, I sound really serious, don't I? Sorry. Um, that's it, really, knee problems, back problems, anything like that. There's a couple where we're kneeling, so if it does aggravate your knees, I can give you other options for that, okay? I'll talk you through that as we go. And with your lower back, or any part of your back, Pilates is very good for realignment through the spine, and help for strengthening through your spine, okay? So don't suffer, you can do a couple of repetitions if you're comfortable to do so, rest, and then join back in when you're ready, okay? Um, and that's it. I'll get you in a standing position to start with and then we'll get you down on the floor. I can hear my phone is just making a noise. Bear with me, I'll turn the volume up. Oh. That's better. Okay, so we're going to make a start. Nice and upright, nice and tall. Toes and knees point forwards. Shoulders down and relaxed. Make sure that you're balanced and central so you can rock forwards, backwards, side to side. Making sure you've got an even distribution of body weight across both of your feet. You don't feel lopsided, you don't feel like you're leaning, okay? And once you're in this upright position, you're finding what we refer to as your neutral spine, the natural lordotic curve in your back. And all you're doing is tilting the pelvis forwards and backwards, finding the position where your back feels the most comfortable, finding that natural lordotic curve, the neutral spine, comfortable back, okay? Holding that in position, the pelvic floor, the muscle from within, the one you've used to stop me flow. Imagine that muscle is attached to a lift. And you're gonna draw it up from within all the way up to floor number 10. You're gonna lower it down to floor five and then down to floor number three and that's where you leave it. So you know you're holding it. There's some mild tension, but it's not too uncomfortable. Then imagine a belt around your middle. 10 notches on the belt. Pull the belt into notch number 10. Out to notch number five out to notch number three and leave it there so we know we're holding from the center of the body and because we're holding from the core we then need to breathe lateral thoracic breathing this is called breathing from your rib cage hands on the rib cage fingertips touch we take a nice deep breath in open the ribs and release deep breath in and release relax the arms down and just begin to pedal through your feet one side to the other Raising up and alternating heel. Allow your shoulders to gently rotate one way and the other. Place your feet down flat. Lift all the way up onto the toes. Lengthen the body and release. All the way up. Lift and lengthen and release. One more time. All the way up. Lift, lengthen and release. So we're going to take a step out. Reaching up and over, into the middle, and then going the other way. So the leg that steps out, you bend that knee. The leg that stays in place, you're lengthening through that leg. Lateral, um, lateral um, stretch through the side of the body. Give me words out. Good. Into the middle. Toes and knees forward, back in that set up position. Arms come up, breathe out, in. As you breathe out, rotate one way. Breathe in, come to the middle. Breathe out, go the other way. Breathe in, come to the middle. Now, as you rotate, try and keep your hips nice and still. Breathe in to return. Breathe 
out to rotate, into the middle, and release. So you're just gonna take one leg forward and point the toe. You're gonna circle the leg round, you're gonna lift the leg up and balance, take the toe forward, circle the leg round, she says as she falls over, lift the knee up and balance, ankle one way and the other, and place it down. If you need to hold on to something for balance, that's absolutely fine, guys. Other leg forward, point the toes, circle round, lift the knee up, balance. Toe forward, circle round, lift and balance. Holding it here, ankle one way, and the other, and place the foot down. So standing towards one end of your mat, you're gonna breathe in, tuck the chin to your chest, Breathe out and just begin to gently roll down through your back. Soften your knees, allow your arms to hang and relax. And then when you're ready, begin to gently roll back up through the spine. Rebuild your back. As you reach the top, relax the shoulders down. Breathe in, chin to the chest. Breathe out, begin to roll down through your back. At your lowest point, arms hang and relax. And then gently begin to roll back up. So when we roll down this time, we're gonna be making our way down to the floor. So breathe in, chin to the chest. Breathe out, gently roll down. At your lowest point, you're gonna walk yourself down into a box position. Knees, hips distance apart. Wrists and elbows underneath the shoulders. You're gonna breathe in, and as you breathe out, you're gonna push one leg all the way back along the floor without moving any other part of your body. And then breathe in and drag it back in. Other leg, breathe out, push the leg away. Breathe in and drag it all the way back in. Breathe out, push. Breathe in, return. Breathe out, push, level one this is. Breathe in, return. Now if you want level two, you fully extend out along the floor first, and then you raise, no higher than the body. Toes down at the furthest point, and then you slide the leg back in. So level two, you're adding the leg raise. Level three, Opposite arm slides out along the floor. So we just push the opposite arm out. We don't lift it, we just push it out. And then your last option, arm and leg come up together. They gently lower, and then it draws back in. So just the leg on its own, without the lift, level one. With the lift at level two, Opposite arm out along the floor. Level three. And then lifting the arm as well as the leg. Level four. Now don't rush your movement. Keep every movement slow and controlled. A full deep breath out to allow the leg to move away and a whole breath in to bring it back in. So every movement is controlled by your breathing. So it's slow, it's controlled. If you're moving fast, then your breathing is too fast. Nice, full, deep breaths. Strengthen through the core and the lumbar spine. And I'm gonna ask you please, for one more on each side. And once you've completed those two, sorry, my dog is making so much noise. He's got his baby, so he's playing, but it's really annoying me. It sounds like he's tap dancing because his claws need a cut. Good, when you've done those two, you're gonna gently lower. So you're on your forearms and elbows, looking down at the floor. So your head and neck are aligned with the spine. And you're gonna come into your leg pull. So level one, all you're doing is drawing up the pelvis, but keeping your knees down. Head and neck in line with the spine. Level two, you're bringing your knees up and holding. 
What we don't want is for our bottom to be in the air. It's got to be down and in line with the rest of the body. If you want level three, make sure your hands don't slip. You can come all the way up onto those hands. Deep, full breaths. Pull up through your belly button. Deep, full breaths from the rib cage. So in your leg pull, remember level one knees down, level two knees up, level three up on those hands. I'm gonna ask you please for three more breaths. Every breath full and deep. And once you've completed those, you're gently gonna allow yourself to lower all the way down onto your front. And you're going to extend your arms and your legs. Now your head will be down. Breathe in. As you breathe out, one arm and the opposite leg lift up. And then breathe in to gently lower. Breathe out, other side lifts up. Breathe in to lower. Now as you lift up, only lift as far as comfortable. Don't lift too high because otherwise your leg will start to bend. Also, imagine you've got an ice cube underneath your belly button, okay? So your core muscles are pulled up without having that bottom in the air. You're just engaging the core, tightening that corset around the middle of the body. Breathing out to lift and in to release. swimming on your fronts, strengthening through the lumbar spine, through the core. I'm going to ask you please for one more on each side, so two breaths in total. Then you're going to slide your arms back and you're coming back to your level of leg pull. Knees down level one, knees up level two, on the hands at level three. Now I want you to use Full, deep breaths, strengthening right through the centre of the body, through your core, pulling up through the belly button. The leg pull strengthens the core and the lumbar spine. So you might hear this called a plank in other classes, fitness classes, but in Pilates it's the leg pull, that's what Joseph Pilates called it, and just over the years it's been changed to make it more adaptable for other kind of ranges of fitness class, really. So I'm going to ask you, please, for three more breaths here. Once you've completed those three, you're gently going to lower and turn all the way over onto one side. Now, you need to be in a straight line. I've got my mat slightly um, diagonal, so I am straight, even if I might not look it. Toes pulled away, head down on the arm with your fingers pulled away. This hand is there for your balance, please. Breathe in. As you breathe out, both legs lift without rolling your hips forwards or back. So if you imagine you're laying between two panes of glass, you can't roll forward, you can't roll backwards. Now we're going to be moving our legs, okay? So breathe in. As you breathe out, raise the top leg. As you breathe in, lower it down. Now your bottom leg, breathe out, kick it forwards, and then breathe in to return. Breathe out to lift. Breathe in to lower. Breathe out to kick. Breathe in to return. Hand is there for balance. If you don't need it, that's your next level. And you might find when you take your hand away that you need to make your movement a little bit smaller. That is absolutely fine. I would rather see that than your hips keep rolling around the floor. If you're able to balance okay, you can then bring the arm over 
and that just takes you to your next level. Pull those toes away from your body so you feel lengthened from the fingers all the way down to the toes. You breathe out as the leg moves away from you and in as it returns towards you. And I'm gonna ask you please for one more of each move. Once you've completed those two, legs together, point the toes away, good. Just try and bring those legs up another inch or two. This is gonna work into the waist. Those muscles there have already tightened to keep those legs up in the first place. Good. Take two more nice, full, deep breaths, and then you can allow those legs to carefully lower all the way down. And if you need to give it a little rub, please do. When you're ready, you're gonna push yourself to sit. Okay. Legs bent, feet down, shoulders down, relax. Lengthen your back so your chin is off the chest. You're looking straight ahead. Two movements here. Breathe in for a tilt, small one, and then breathe out to lower further down. Then breathe in to start coming up, and then breathe out to continue coming up. So you've got two on the way down, two on the way up. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. So it's slower, okay? If you prefer, you can work with straight legs. It's a matter of comfort, whichever you prefer. Breathe in to tilt, breathe out to lower. If you only want to go to there, that is fine. Breathe in, start the lift, breathe out, continue the lift. If you want to go all the way down, that's great. But remember, however far you go down, you've got to get back up without moving your feet, without wobbling your knees. Breathe in to tilt, breathe out to lower. Breathe in, start the lift, breathe out, continue all the way up. Lengthen the back, don't come over into the legs, only come back to your start position. It's not a natural position for your back to be leaning over into those legs. Core muscles zipped up, pulled in. Sorry, I've just got to rearrange my waistband. Breathe in until, breathe out and lower. Breathe in, start the lift. Breathe out, continue all the way up. And I'm gonna ask you please, this is called roll up. Strength and mobility through the lumbar spine and through your core. For one more please. Remember two breaths per repetition. And once you've completed that, you're gonna carefully lower all the way down onto your back. And you're gonna bring your heels slightly closer to your bottom. So we're gonna come into shoulder bridge first. Shoulders down, relaxed. All I want you to do, keeping your legs apart, so hips distance, you're gonna breathe in and tilt the pelvis under, and then breathe out and release. Breathe in, tilt the pelvis under, breathe out and release. So that is your level one, it's just a pelvic tilt and release. Level two, breathe in and tilt, breathe out and peel your back up off the floor into this diagonal ski slope position. And then you're gonna breathe in, start to lower top of the back first, and then breathe out, continue all the way down. Breathe in and tilt, breathe out and lift. Breathe in. Breathe out, begin to gently lower all the way down. Think of your spine as a string of beads and you're placing each one down one at a time. And your tailbone is coming down last. So gently lowering from the top of the back, vertebrae by vertebrae, all the way down so the tailbone touches down. Try not to allow your legs to wobble. So we're gonna add on another movement here, if you want to, you don't have to. Breathe in, tilt, breathe out, come up. Now, as you're up, stay here, breathe in, breathe out, 
bring your arms over, breathe out, bring your arms down, then breathe in, and then breathe out to lower. So we've added our arms going over and back down. Breathe in until, breathe out, peel up. Breathe in, arms go over, breathe out, arms come down, breathe in, lower the spine down. If it's too much, leave the arms out, okay? If you're happy with it, then carry on. Now as an option, you can always leave the arms up there first, lower the back down, and then lower the arms down. Be careful not to allow your tummy muscles to dome, so you don't want them rounding upwards. And as you lower, you are going vertebrae by vertebrae, so your back isn't rushing, you're not pushing it too quickly. So in your shoulder bridge, I'm gonna ask you please, at your level, without moving those knees, without clenching the bottom, for one more repetition. And once you've completed that, you're just gonna hug your knees in and just rest the lower back. Well done. When you're ready, you're just gonna bend your legs, place the feet back down. This time they're about, um, however far that distance is, one of your feet distance away from your bottom, okay? Shoulders down, relax. I don't know if you've got size 15 feet, then that leg's gonna be quite far away, isn't it? My number six, that's not too bad. Breathe in, as you breathe out, bring one leg up into the right angle position. Knee above the hip, shin faces upwards. Now you can stay here, or you can go further by bringing up the upper body, palms face down, breathe in, breathe out, push the hands down to the floor. So it's like you've got a bouncy ball, you're pushing it down, this is called the hundred. If you wanna go further, you can bring the other leg up as well. Remember, right angle in the knee. Deep, full breaths. Good. One leg or both legs with or without the upper body. Now keep the hips nice and parallel. Keep the core muscles zipped up, pulled in and in place. Well done. So I'm gonna ask you please, at your level, for three more breaths. If, after those three breaths, you've got your upper body raised, you're going to lower it back down. Keeping the first leg lifted, if you've got the other one up, it comes back to the floor. So with this leg, you're gonna keep it bent, you're gonna breathe in, as you breathe out, you're gonna touch it down, and then you're gonna breathe in and bring it back up. At no time should you move your knee joint. The movement is coming from the top of the leg through the hip flexor. Breathe out to lower, Breathe in to raise. Right angle in the knee. Breathe out to lower. Breathe in to raise. If you want to work harder, you can have the other leg raised as well, but we'll keep it nice and still. Remember, you're working with your breathing. Full deep breath out to take the leg out. Full breath in to bring it in. Strengthen through the core and the lumbar spine. I'm gonna ask you please, with this leg, for two more, then you're gonna allow that foot to carefully come down, and when you're ready, you're gonna bring the other leg up, right angle position, right angle in the knee, you should be able to reach your knee. Okay, they can't reach it, it's too far away. You've got a big bend on your elbow, it's too close. Keeping the leg bent, breathe in. As you breathe out, you can bring up the upper body and add the pulse. Now you don't have to add the pulse, it's there if you want it. You can just hold and breathe. You wanna go further, the other leg comes up as well. Your shins are facing the ceiling, okay? Knees above the hips. There's no point doing it if you're gonna allow those heels to drop down. 
So you have one leg with or without the pulse, both legs with or without the pulse. Absolutely your choice. Strengthen through the core and the lumbar spine. You should be able to touch your fingertips together under the small of the back. Deep, full breaths. Well done. So the hundred, strengthen the core and the lumbar spine. If you've got both legs raised, I'm gonna ask you please for two more breaths and then to lower the other leg down. So we're left with the leg that we had lifted for our second set of the hundred. Then when you're ready, we move into that scissor, keeping the leg bent, breathe in. As you breathe it out, touch the foot down, breathe in, bring it back up, maintaining the right angle behind the knee. Breathing out as we allow it to lower, breathing in as it comes back up. If you want to work further, you can have both legs raised, but we are only moving that one leg. Shoulders down and relax, core muscles in and in place. Breathe out as the leg goes out, away from the body. Breathe in as it comes back in. Strengthening all the time through the core and the lumbar spine. So in your scissor, I'm going to ask you please for three more breaths. Once you've done those three, if you've got both legs raised, please allow one at a time to carefully lower down. Once you've got both feet on the floor, you're gonna bring your legs together. So they're still bent with your feet down, but your legs are together. And your arms are gonna come out to the side. Now, your knees are gonna go one way, but your head is gonna go the other. So you're looking away from your knees. Breathe in. As you breathe out, knees go one way, head goes the other. And then breathe in, come back to the middle, and breathe out and change sides. So this really helps with realignment through the spine. Works through your waist as well. Breathe out as you lower, in as you return. Now you're only going as far as comfortable. It does not matter if you cannot get your knees to the floor. As soon as you feel your shoulder is beginning to lift up, then you've gone far enough, okay? If you want to go further, you can have both legs raised, but the legs are stuck together. And then lower down one way, come back into the middle, and then go the other way. And again, it's only as far as comfortable. If you're lowering the knees and that shoulder, I'm gonna go too far deliberately. So you can see, shoulders start to come up, so you know you've gone too far, okay? So just breathe out to lower, breathe in to come back to the middle. Or keep those legs down, but keep those feet stuck together, the legs stuck together. So in your trunk rotation, Please complete one more to each side. And once you've completed those two, legs down if you've got them raised, you can give yourself a nice long body stretch. Then when you're ready, we're transferring over onto our other side. Our head is resting down on the arm. Legs lengthen in line with the body. Head down on that arm. Hand is there for balance. Breathe in as you breathe out. Both legs raise. Don't roll forward or back. From here, breathe in. As you breathe out, top leg comes up. Breathe in, it comes back down. Breathe out, bottom leg comes forwards. Breathe in, it comes back in. So the top leg raises and the bottom leg kicks. With both of these movements, they are only as far as comfortable for you. 
If you're kicking or lifting and your hips are rolling, you need to make it smaller. If you don't need the hand there for balance, you can take it away. Also, try and make sure your legs stay nice and straight. Don't bend the knee, it just makes it sloppy, yeah? If your balance is really good, arm comes all the way over. Breathing out as the leg moves away, in as it comes in. Working down the side of the body, so you've got the obliques, you've got the hip area, and down the side of that leg. Bottom leg is moving as well, so you've got a little bit of the inner thigh working. Strengthening right through the body. Point from the fingers to the toes. And I'm gonna ask you please, for one more of each movement. And once you've completed those, those two, one of each, you're gonna keep those legs lifted, held, and still. And just bring them up as far as comfortable without rolling. The obliques, the waist is engaged. Those muscles are working to keep those legs lifted. Well done. And then gently release those legs all the way down. Bring the knees in, give that a little rub if you need to. Then when you're ready, you're gonna be bringing yourself round. Box position getting ready to bring ourselves to stand. Back is lengthened, chin is off the chest. You're gonna carefully push yourself back to a crouched position, tuck the chin in. When you're ready, place the feet flat and then carefully, slowly begin to roll up through the back, keep the chin tucked in. As you reach the top, head and neck raise last relax the shoulders down. So we're back up into our standing position and we need to make sure that we're balanced, we're not lopsided, we're not leaning. Centralise your body weight across both feet the same. Relax the shoulders, lengthen the back, neutral spine, core muscles in place. Well done. Excellent work. So lift up onto your toes. Hopefully you will feel okay after that. Lift up onto those toes. It's a nice gentle kind of torture, that one. Good, lift up onto the toes. Balance, close your eyes if you feel you can. And Pilates will help to improve your balance as well, guys. Carefully, gently lower down. Well done, and that's it for today, guys. Tomorrow, I believe we've got combat hit and legs, bums and tongues, okay? I'm saying that with my timetable sat on my coffee table over the other side of the room, but I'm pretty confident that they are the two classes for tomorrow. Well done for today, and I will see you tomorrow. Take care, bye for now.